So was everyone able to figure out what the issue with the last image was from relinking images A through F plus H? So I want to take a minute to kind of highlight that one. I, I trust that you did all the other ones uh, based on the previous video, but I want to point out why it's important to always check for the file name and what the image looks like. Because the last image is assignment1h.tiff, and if we follow the same procedure that we did in the previous uh, video, we see that there's an issue, whether we see that on the pre-flight panel or we see it on the links panel. We can click on the page and it will show us what the image looks like. This is the parrot's image and it is assignment 1H. But when I go to relink that via the relink button and I look in the folder of images that I was given, I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and I have no H. And that's because there's a renaming issue on this. Somebody named the file H and then they renamed it G. So maybe originally the project had uh, more images and it had an A, a B, a C, a D, E, F, G, and an H. But in an edited version, one of the images was changed and whoever renamed the files decided that they shouldn't skip G anymore and they should rename the file G. By doing that, they broke the link because they added a hyphen, but also because they changed the letter on the name. And so in order to relink this, I need to click through the images and I need to find the one of the parrot. And it happens to be G instead of H, but the image matches. If I look at the little preview in um, the relink dialog box and I look at the image in Canvas, it's the same image. And so instead of using assignment1h.tiff, I'm going to replace that with G. And I'm going to do that for both of the images, but I still need to select it and I'm looking for ideally this file name. And then I'm also looking in this case for the parrots. And so I come back and I can relink that image and then all of my images have now been relinked. Okay, let's jump back to Canvas and let's remind you what the next step is. So we relinked any missing and we accepted any modified images, but we didn't have any modified images. We're going to pre-flight the file, uh, which we basically already did by completing steps three and four, but we'll double check that because we're always going to pre-flight. Um, and we're going to make sure that there are no more automated pre-flight errors. And when we're done, we're going to properly package assignment number one. And so if we come back to InDesign, there are two ways to pre-flight, and there is, there's automated, which is what we're focusing on in project one, and then there's manual. You can check things that will not automatically be checked by the pre-flight panel. Your goal, your, your first level of goal for this project, or anytime you're really working in InDesign, is you want to have a green circle in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen down here, right there. I think when I click, it puts a little circle around the clicker, so you can see a million circles right now. Um, I kind of like to say it's a green thumbs up, even though it's not a thumb and it's not pointing up, but that's how I like to think about it. It's telling you you're good to go and you can move forward. You can also see that same um, icon on the pre-flight panel, and so you don't need to have the pre-flight panel open all the time. You really just need to open it if there's a problem, and that bottom left-hand corner of your screen will indicate if there's a problem or not. Once you have done automated pre-flighting for Project 1 or Assignment 1 in Art 1200, you can just move on to the next step and you can package. But there are some other things that eventually you will want to check, and they are that the swatches panel is only using swatches that meet the requirements of your project. And if I zoom in here, you can see that I have swatches. I'm using all these different colors. Um, we will learn in a future lecture that these icons mean something. So the one that looks like it's gray actually has little tiny dots on it. That means that the color is, is created using what's called a process build, and it's meaning that instead of printing with actual purple or blue or brown. It's blending colors together to make those colors. And in this case, it's blending cyan, magenta, yellow, and black together because that's a little icon on the right hand side. If it was showing me red, green, and blue, it would be making it out of red, green, and blue, which is RGB color mode, which is for the web. Down the bottom here, the very last color I'm using, which is E3, B2, um, E3, E2, B3, it's a hex code number. I just pulled those off of um, Adobe Color Themes. Uh, right here, it has a circle inside that little icon, and that means it's a spot color. And that's why when I go to create color separations for this project, I'm going to see CMYK colors for these, these first colors I'm using in the project. And then I'm going to see literal cream as a spot color. I'm going to print with cream ink instead of making that out of some combination of yellow and the paper color. You also want to check your, your images, and so if you select an image, not a grouping of images, but an image itself, the, 
the bottom half of your links panel will give you information about your project or about your file. And so you would look at this and you would say, are these the correct settings for the output I'm trying to achieve? And so for our class, we're always going to prep for print. So we want a print file format and a print resolution and a print color mode. And so this file is set up for printing. A TIFF is a print file format. Um, the resolution is 300. The effective resolution is 300. It's telling us exactly how many pixels it is and the color mode is in CMYK. We'll learn more about this in great detail when we do uh, module 6, learning about formatting images for print. Once you have that green thumbs up on your preflight panel, you can move forward to packaging. And packaging, if you've done all your prep work and you've preflighted the file, literally is going to take about 30 seconds um, after this first project. Obviously it's going to take you a long time the first time you do it. But InDesign will basically walk you through it. So you choose file and then package. And then once you choose package, a dialog box will appear and you're going to basically accept what it's saying. You're going to, let's zoom in here, you are going to look at it and say, yep, that sounds right. And if it doesn't, then you're going to hit cancel and you're going to go and fix that. But if you properly preflated your file, you should be saying, yep, that works and everything's correct. So a summary you can't change, and so you can just kind of glance at it and you can read through it if you want to. What you really want to pay attention to are tabs 2, 3, and 4. So tab 2 tells you the typefaces or the fonts that you're using in the project, and more importantly, it tells you what kind of type they are and what the status is. And so what I want you to do is look at this list and decide, are the fonts that I'm using included? So am I using Europe Underground Light? I am. It should be included. Am I using more than just Europe Underground? If the answer is yes, if I'm using Times New Roman or Minion Pro or Futura, and I don't see it on the list, InDesign doesn't think I'm using it. So you need to hit cancel and you need to figure out why. The same goes if you see too many fonts. If I know that I'm only using Europe Underground Light, but I see Minion Pro and Futura and Times New Roman, InDesign thinks I'm using those files, so you should hit cancel and you should go back to your file and you should fix it. Now you can use the find font and you can do find and replace. I'm not requiring you to do that, so I would prefer at this stage in your InDesign career or experience, just hit cancel, go back to your document, and manually fix the problem. Tab number three is the links and images tab, and we know that links are images. And so this is going to show us all the images that are, we're using in the project. It'll tell us the name, the type, it's a TIFF file, it's CMYK, how many page, I'm sorry, what page it's on, the status, which is the most important, and it will tell you about um, the ICC profile, which we're not going to talk about right now. You want to look through this and you want to see are all of the images that I think that I'm using included. Now, it's hard to tell because there's so many pictures. That's why it's important to pre-flight, because if I pre-flighted, I know all the pictures I'm using are linked. Other things that you can look at really quickly is if I want to make sure these are all TIFFs and they're all CMYK, if I scan through this and I see one that says RGB or it says JPEG, it kind of stands out like a sore thumb and I could say, oh, you know, that image, it shouldn't be an RGB image, so I'm going to hit cancel and go and fix it. And then the last thing you want to look at in this panel is whether or not the status is linked. If you have any broken links, you do not want to move forward because a broken link will not be packaged in your folder for you. And again, if you pre-flighted, then you should have all linked images. The last is the colors and the inks. And so this will show you the colors and the inks that your project is going to print. And so if I compare that to the swatches panel that I have open, I am using these colors in the project. Like, nobody's debating that. But if I think that I'm trying to make all of these colors out of CMYK, and then I look at the colors I'm printing with, and I have cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and then I have a spot color here, which correlates to this beige color, if I didn't think that I was going to buy and use cream ink, I would hit cancel here, and I would go back and fix that color swatch. And right now, you don't have to have the ability to do that, but you should know that this panel shows you the inks that you will physically be printing with. Like we're not talking about printing on like a desktop printer. We're talking about sending to a commercial printing press where they put ink, like liquid ink, into a printing press and they print whatever colors you tell them to print. If I was to send this file to them, I would be telling them, I want you to print with cyan, magenta, yellow, black, plus I want you to buy a special cream ink and put that in the printing press. And if you're not meaning to communicate that to them, hit cancel and go fix your file. Now, you can check out the last two tabs if you want to, but there's nothing that you can do at this point to change them. The print settings is going to show you um, the, the settings that you have programmed into your file. Um, they're all going to be default because I haven't shown you how to change them. 
Um, and then the external plugins, which I talked about earlier in the lecture, um, there are two types of plugins that you can get from it for InDesign. You can install plugins which cannot be transferred from person to person. That would allow you to maybe make an app or something like that. Um, I don't even know if you have to do that anymore. The newest version of InDesign, I think they embed that. Uh, but then you can also install um, plugins that can be transferred. So you can install plugin packets that have like printer's marks. So if you're laying out a page of business cards, you could make one um, eight and a half by eleven inch document, and you could manually put your trim marks on the page. Those kind of things they'll transfer from person to person, and if you're using them, you'll see them listed on the external plugins. When you hit package, if you haven't saved your project or if you haven't saved changes in your project, it will tell you to accept the changes. So we'll go ahead and save it. A print instructions dialog box will appear, and I would like you to fill this out to the best of your ability. Um, however, at the very least, I want you to put your last name one, last name two, last name three, depending on what project you're working on. Do not put any file extension here. It'll cause an error later on in the packaging process. When you hit continue, you'll then get to decide where this folder is going to be housed. It's going to be a folder that has all the things that you would need to send to a commercial printer. I'm going to toss mine on the desktop for now, and I'm going to put like a little B next to it because I've been... Um, it's the beginning of the semester and I've been demoing this for all of my different classes and so I have a bunch of current folders on the desktop. If your save as dialog box or your package dialog box ever is small, make sure that you expand it by hitting the little down arrow so that you can give it a name, you can see a visual location of where you're saving it, and then you can decide, in this case, the settings that you want for your package. And so I'm going to give it a name, current one folder. I kind of really hate that it says folder. I, I think it's just my own personal pet peeve. So a lot of times I'll erase that so it just says current one. Um, whether or not it says folder or not, it's still going to make a folder. For our class, I want you to make sure that you select the first three options to copy the fonts, to copy the linked graphics, and to update the graphic links in the package. You can include document hyphenation exceptions, and you can include the fonts and the links from non -hidden, uh, from hidden and non-printing content, but you don't know how to make those things yet, so it doesn't matter whether you include them or not, it will not make a difference. Now, in my earlier video, I was showing you a screenshot from an earlier version of InDesign, and I said that I really hate the, the six checkbox that will uh, open the instructions. So as soon as you hit package here, it packages your folder and then it opens up the text file. And I told you that I found it really annoying, so I never selected it. It looks like in the newest version of InDesign, they've gotten rid of that. They must have heard my complaints. Uh, last but not least, I would like you to include an IDML file. That's that file that you can open up in CS4, 5, 5.5, 6, Creative Cloud, etc. And it's really good practice to always include that because if you give somebody files and you have the absolute newest version of InDesign and they don't have it, they won't be able to open them. And then I would not like you to include a print PDF. So you are required to make print PDFs in our class and you'll do one for this first project, but I want you to manually make them because I want you to choose the settings. And if you include a PDF here, it's going to be a default setting unless you save a preset. And so just don't select that. Oh, they moved the view report down here and it's not automatically checked. So I guess they didn't get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, ahead and hit package. It's going to tell me not to steal fonts and I'll say I am not stealing fonts. And then I, I can minimize this if I don't trust that it worked. I threw it on my desktop over here. So it's current 1B, it's a folder, it has all those things that I said it should have, right? Those four main components, whoops, these two and these two. And then it also has the IDML file. In the next video, I'll show you how to export your project to various file formats.